Hello! If you're having problems with object-oriented programming, you have come to the right video, my friend, because they are probably throwing 15-letter words at you, trying to teach you object-oriented programming, but you really just... Ugh, they're not very good at teaching these concepts simply. So that's my goal today, is to teach you object-oriented programming concisely, simply, in only a few minutes. So here we go. We're in Eclipse. I'm just going to make a new project, and I'll call it Example 1. And then in here, we'll just I'll just call this class example one actually. Example one with a main method. A class is a blueprint for an object. So like how we make a scanner object, it has methods and variables that we can use. Well, there's a scanner class somewhere out there that says what that scanner can do. So let's make an object, say that has um, a name, and then a method. And all it does is print out my name. We just made an object with a class. This class, Blueprint, called example1, has the attribute name and has the ability to say a name. This object in the computer could represent any object in real life, like these headphones. These headphones are gray, so we could make a string color and these headphones could like turn the volume up or down. So a class is a blueprint for making objects and an object is just like an object in real life. All it has is variables and methods. So now let's get into some of those 15, 20 letter words. Okay, we got polymorphism. Polymorphism just means that you can have multiple methods with the same name, but with like different parameters. So we could have a name in here and then print out my name is name, or whatever. Polymorphism means many forms. So one method could have many forms, but have the same name. It could have a string name as a parameter. It could have, I don't know, a 2D array of character variables as a parameter. It could have 20 parameters if you wanted and still be called same name. So that's polymorphism, and that's called overloading a method. It means it's the same name, but maybe different parameters or different types of parameters. The other type of polymorphism is overriding a method. Say we have another class here. I'll call it example two. And this has a method in here called say hi. And all this does is say hi. These methods could do anything, but this is just simple. If we wanted to bring that say hi method into example one, all you have to do is type extends example two. Now example one has say hi as well. So if we added a main method in here to run our code, made an example one object, and then did e1 dot, we can see the name, we can see say name, the other say name from overloading, and we can also see say hi even though say hi isn't in here, but since we have extends example two, it sees it and we can do say hi. So if we run this, it works. But we can change the functionality of that say hi by typing it here. Now this overrides this. So now if we run it, it will do nothing because since this is the same amount of parameters, zero parameters, and it's the same name, it takes this one instead of the other one. So that's overriding. Now let's get into like what this extends keyword is. So we did this thing up here, extends example two, we brought in say hi. And of course you could bring in whatever, however many methods or attributes this has. This is called inheritance. It inherits the methods and variables from the other one. So if you see extends, it just means there's an inheritance relationship here it inherits the other methods and variables. And that's inheritance. <laughs> the bottom one is usually called the subclass, and then the one it extends is called the superclass. Inheritance is good for reusability of code, so you could have another example and then do extends example two on that one, and you'd have multiple classes that all extend from example two and all have say hi because of it. That's inheritance, that's really it. Now let's do some encapsulation. Um, I'll just, set this back to its bare bones class here. Let's do this bag of dog treats because any object in the real world you can put into a object-oriented programming language. So we can have say the flavor and maybe a method called open 
bag. Bag is opened. Now, example one doesn't have say hi anymore because we removed the inheritance relationship with that extends keyword. Now we can do open bag and also see the flavor. But a lot of the times people don't care about the variable. And a lot of the times the variable is also private. So this private, public, 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 private, these are called access modifiers, which just change when you make an object, which variables and methods you have access to. So now if we did E1 dot, we don't see flavor anymore. Well, we do see flavor, but it's red. If this was in another class, I'll put this in example two for now, the main method. We don't see flavor because it's private. The reason we could see flavor in this one is because it was in the same file. But now how do we set and get the flavor without changing the variable since we can't access it? Well, we just make a method to do that for us and they're called setters and getters. So we can set the flavor, set flavor by making a method like this to a new flavor. And then all we do is do flavor equals new flavor. And then we can get it as well return the string, get flavor, and return flavor. Now, if we try this out, we can set flavor, since they're public, to beef. And then we can print out get flavor. Now we got beef. We're able to set and get the private variable through methods, and that's called encapsulation. Now, why would we do this? Because the variables are usually private and it makes it easier for the user to do it through methods. That's encapsulation. Let's move on to interfaces. You probably heard the word interface and we're probably confused as heck like me. We can turn this into an interface by just changing class to the word interface. And all an interface is is just a list of variables and methods. Guys, object-oriented programming is just objects with variables and methods. Variables and methods, that's it, that's it. An interface is just a list of variables and methods. So we can do string uh, flavor again, put some keywords in here and say like the flavor doesn't change and it's gonna be beef forever. And the list of methods it's gonna have is open bag, open bag, like this. We don't need curly braces because we don't need to implement or put code inside the method. We're just listing them out. An interface is just a list of variables and methods. So now, how do we use the interface? Just like inheritance used extends to inherit those methods, now we're going to use implements, example one. This has to be an example two. We get a red underline because we need to add the unimplemented methods from the interface. And we see open bag here because open bag was in the list. Now all we do is implement it here with whatever code you want, but I'm just gonna do a print statement. I can do e2 dots open back. And that is interfaces. This is useful in the real world because maybe you want a list or blueprint for like a high level bag of dog treats and you wanna make a bunch of smaller bags of dog treats that are a little bit different. They can all have implements master dog treat bag, and then customize what each of their open bag methods are or how each of them are a little different. This gets to abstraction. Abstraction means that only the details that the user needs to know are there and everything else is hidden. So like here, the interface is completely abstracted because it doesn't say how open bag is implemented. It doesn't show what the code is for open bag. And that's really it. Classes are blueprints for objects. Objects represent real world objects in the computer using variables and methods. Methods can have the same name using polymorphism. You can bring methods and variables from other classes by inheriting those methods using the extends keyword. And you can also take a list of methods and variables and implement those methods using the implements keyword. And you can also have access to private variables by making methods to change them and get them called setters and getters and that's called encapsulation. So those are the really big object-oriented programming terms in Java, explained quickly and simply for you. If you'd like to share anything else you know about object-oriented programming, you can in the comments down below, help out some other peers. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.